Hello everyone, look at that, this is actually very impromptu. Uh, I hope the lighting is good enough for this. I am super excited for this deck, um, mostly because one, it's a historical deck. Well, sort of historical, I'm not sure. Um, it's a deck that really hasn't been that easy to find. Um, and if you were to find it, it was probably like an old, old copy. It's never been like reproduced. I don't know who first printed it. I'm not sure, hopefully the information is in the guidebook, but Los Carabeo. Uh, has recently re uh, re uh, released this deck with its Anima Antiqua uh, series. And it is... Oh, I see how they packaged it. I'm like, girl, how... Why did... At first when I felt this under the package, I'm like, is this missing the lid? Because I have two other decks that match, that are a part of this series. Uh, I don't know if you guys could hear that. <laughs> Me talking away from the phone. Um... Here I have the Solabusca, and here I have the Metelli. They did a Minkiati. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, Minkiati. Uh, and they're releasing a Marseille Tarot next. But this one is one that, first of all, it's a system I don't have. Uh, and I kept meaning I've always meant to get uh, this system into my collection. Uh, I always thought, oh, I'll have this with my Thoth and my Marseille and my Rider Waite Smith and all that. And Rider Waite Smith actually does base a lot of its meanings on this system, and I don't know why I'm beating around the bush. <laughs> uh, it is an Atea system. Uh, I'm not sure if Atea himself made this deck or worked on it. I'm not sure, uh, but it is it is based on this on his system, and it's called. It has two names. Here it's called Terror of the Egyptians, and as you can see in the title of the video, um, but it's also called uh, Tarot of the Princesses. Uh, and you could find a walkthrough of it, comparing it. Ooh, it's small. Uh, comparing it to uh, other decks. Uh, I'm not sure what else it's called. Uh, I first saw this deck in Robert M. Place's book. Let me see. If, let me get it real quick. Here it is. This meat. This meat. <laughs> this meaty, meaty book. <laughs> Uh, which I'm actually gonna start the book club soon. Hopefully, uh, yeah, in February. I mean, it's already like, what is this, the last day in January? <laughs> uh, but let me see if I can find it. Uh, right, you sh should be somewhere here. Where are you? You'll usually see. I think in like the Hierophant card, they sh he shows it. Yeah, here it is. So here's the first images that I've seen of it. So yeah, I'm not sure if these, uh, yeah, this should be. This should be this deck. Uh, Etea, uh, Je de la Princesse? I don't know. <laughs> Terror of the, uh, Terror of the, uh, Terror of the Princesses? Or, well, it'd be more like Cards of the Princesses? I, I don't know. Um, I wish, I, I don't know if they, if the backs are the same as that. Um, as the Terror of the Princesses in the video that I saw. I'll try. Uh, it's somewhere there. Uh, it, there's a video somewhere. If you look it up, you'll find it. Um, and... The backs looked really nice. I loved, like, it was, like, a pinkish, like, well-designed little back, you know? Uh, but uh, this one, I think, just has plain white backs from what I've seen in the images online of this of this exact copy here. So, which I'm a little disappointed in. Uh, of course, I love the matte feeling. I didn't like that they went glossy for the Metelli because, I don't know, it's just me. <laughs> I like the softer feel. I don't know why. Uh, so yeah, Tarot Egyptians, Paris, 1875. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't know what, what else to say about it. <laughs> Let's open it up here. Oh my gosh. So here we go. Here we go. What is that? What are these? Oh, they're the... <laughs> what the fuck are these? They're the, they're the thumb cutouts uh, that fell into the box. <laughs> they were in the bottom. I'm like, what are those? <laughs> Hopefully they didn't mess with the with the cards. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, so yeah. Oh yeah. I think that's the male significator that they mentioned. Here's the number card. I got number four forty eight. Okay. And then here's the little little guidebook. Uh, I'm not sure how much information is on here. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Atea, 1738 to 1791. Changes the iconography and the numbers of the cards of the icon iconographic. Is that how you pronounce that? I, I can, whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm double, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning my pronunciations of words as of recent. Uh, 
the iconographic Marseille model to bring them closer to the Egyptian hermetic tradition to which he claimed they belong. The first pterodactyl linked to Atea, the Grand Atea, the first, or it's like I or one, uh, was based on the book Atea au Manier de se recre. Uh, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> How about you put the translation? <laughs> I can't read French. <laughs> Which appeared in the first half of the 19th century. The deck should probably be at, attributed to M. Dio... Dio eh? mm? A Taya student. <laughs> who created it following the indications of his teacher. As already stated, the icon... The iconograph... Iconograph... Jesus Christ... <laughs> Uh, of the Atea uh, deck was quite different from the Marseille model with the addition, among others, of the questionant as card number one and questionante uh, as number two uh, and the creation, uh, no, creation du monde. I'm sorry, I'm putting my Spanish pronunciation on there, but <laughs> it's French. Uh, card six and seven. Each card also has the div uh, divinatory phrases both in regular uh, and reversed positions. Uh, in 1838, the Grand Atea II deck, uh, originally titled Grand Livre de Thoth, uh, Thoth, <laughs> Thoth uh, was published by Sam Simon Blockel, Blockel? Mm, no. uh, the date was confirmed uh, by the book here. That's his name right there, if my camera will focus on it. No? You're not going to focus on that camera? No? There we go, Simon Blockel, I don't know. Uh, the date was confirmed by the book uh, printed in uh, 1838 and entitled Le Grand Ete. Uh So yeah. Anyways, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of that. Let me see. Uh, the deck covered in this, in the next publication originally called uh, Egyptian is a variant of the Grand Atea. Appeared first in 1843. So this was made after Atea died. So it's like based on his system, but it, like, like I said, like I said, I was... My first impressions were right. Atea himself did not work on this. Yeah, look at that. Plain backs. I mean, it looks like... It gives it that vintage look, you know? Which, okay. Uh, one thing about this deck, and with the... Um, with all these Anima Antiqua decks, uh, it says here... Uh, in order to preserve the original uh, feeling of these ancient images, the cards have not been treated with chemical varnish. And so, as a result, they might not be suitable for shuffling. So, don't shuffle these cards. <laughs> don't. You might want to. But don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't shuffle these cards, alright? But I mean, like... Are we gonna listen to them? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. This is this deck. I don't think I'll use. I may scan and print them out on my own cardstock, you know, and have them for my own personal use. Oh yeah, these are like I don't. Yeah, these are. <laughs> I'm paranoid of opening these, so you know. Uh, I may just scan them and have them in my own. Yeah, this is this is much different. Anyways, oh, I don't want to show. I don't want to see all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm ash I, I, I'm I'm ashamed. <laughs> uh, I'm disappointed with the with the backs. They're very they're, they're, you know plain. I wanted those pink, uh, ro reddish pink design backs. Those looked really nice. Let me get this out of the way. Trash. Let me see what else is in here. No, nothing. Nothing. Making sure I'm not missing anything. So yeah, here we go. There we go. Let me close this. Have the box there. We'll have the deck here. And there we go. So we know what we're looking at. There we go. Whew. Already 10 minutes in and we haven't even seen any of the cards. <laughs> Just wanted to give some context. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so yeah. Sages. Mm, no. Anyways. Number two. So again, he reorganized the cards and, you know, changed them up. So this is, I believe, the moon card. As you can see, Anubis. Uh... Here's the star. The world, I think, is what this is supposed to be. Contentment. Hmm. Beat beatitude. Hmm. What is this? Protection. Wait, okay, so like there's English, but then there's like Yeah, this is Sages. No, that's <laughs> that's French. <laughs> 
So is that supposed to be like glory and something? And then fidelity. Yeah, there we go. Peace and then felicity and contentment. Uh, protection. Yeah, okay. So uh, virtue, I think. Yeah. What is this? The high priestess? I like her. I like the skulls and the snakes and all that. Ooh. Uh, justice. La justice. Temperance. Sante. Hmm. The, the triangle on the sphere and the sphere. I like that. Kind of, it's kind of like a different representation of uh, of one foot in the water and one foot on land. Uh, interesting take on that. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Uh, don't know. Wait. What is that? Bonia. Hmm. Uh, prudence. Marriage union, which is in the cover of the box. Chagrins. <laughs> the devil. What an interesting looking devil. Like, yeah, anyways. Moving on. Melancholy. Melancholy. Yeah, but it's, uh, looks like the magician, but it looks, but it says La Feu, uh, Feu Devin. I, I, again, I could be misinterpreting what the words are actually, what they're actually called. But anyways, here we have Judgment. <laughs> It's very interesting how it looks like he's not coming out of a grave, but rather rubble and all that. But like, what's going on in the background? I think it might have, this deck might even be like incomplete or maybe that's just the artistic depiction or how they stylized it. The background being less, you know, detailed. Uh, here we have death. Destruction. Uh, e mortal mm, no. <laughs> Someone who speaks French. Well, do a walkthrough of this, <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm not taking French on Duolingo. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Here's the hermit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A catastrophe. What is that? Uh, I'm trying to read what it says down there. But anyways, here we have the Wheel of Fortune. I wonder if the guidebook like says like, here, dummy, this is what these cards actually are. I'm pretty sure because I know in the Solabusca it does say, uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> um, but moving on. Wheel of Fortune here. Very simple. This is definitely like, I could just imagine like a fortune teller just reading with these cards way back when. Uh, Discord. That's very, what an interesting like title for the chariot, you know. Uh, Le Saviol. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce that. So... I think that's supposed to be like the emperor, but I think we had the empress, or unless she's supposed to be strength because there's the giant lion, lion right there. You know, yeah, that's strength right there. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, this is the emperor here. Ah, uh, there she is. There is the empress. I'm covering. I'm covering them right there. There they are. Kind of reminds me of the neoclassical. Uh, that tarot. So yeah, here we have, uh, what is this? The knight? So we're going into the courts now? Yeah, the knight of clubs, I believe, right? Yeah. That's strange. Yeah. This is a do this is a whole new system for me. Uh, let's see. Page, I'm assuming, right? Anyways, here we have the ten of wands, the nine, so again, the miners are very much uh, Atea inspired based. So yeah, there's eight, right? No, three, four, five, six, seven. Here we go, six. Now I'm not sure what the two. That I'm sure it's explained what those two mean in other books. I need to get Atea's book. <laughs> I know there. I I think there's English translations of his books and all that. Um, so again. A whole new system. Four, three, enterprises. Yeah, society. It it's so weird. It's like French, but then it's like you can read that though. Riches. No, I don't know. Uh, nascence. Yeah, like birth. I think. Yeah. That's. Anyways. Uh, here's the King of Cups. The Queen of Cups. 
the knight. Oh wait, so those that wasn't the king and the queen. Those those I mean those weren't the emperor and the empress. Those were the king and the queen of wands. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh. I'm like, wait a second. Is this the emperor? Because it's like, I'm like, they don't really just, it's like they just continue the numbers 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's the king of, that's the king of wands and there's the queen of wands. There we go. Yeah. I'm like, wait a second. Okay. Going from emperor. I, I'm so, like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> there we go. Anyways, moving on. Now we know. Hmm. So yeah, here we have the page of cups with the with the covered with the veiled cup. Uh, that's a that's a that's a common image for the for the page of cups and other decks. Uh, so yeah, here we have the ten, the nine. So you see, they're, they're, these aren't cut in half. Uh, I think the two of cups is an interesting card that we're gonna see um, in this deck. Uh, so you know. Not much to see here, people. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Three and two. Oh, what did I say? Something different. <laughs> Something like the two of cups is always has that extra thing in there. Um, so yeah, here we have the ace. Here's the king of swords. It's not the emperor, Zach. <laughs> uh, so yeah. And you can see like the Egyptian styles, but again, let me just say, just because this deck exists does not confirm or prove or, you know, support the idea that tarot came from Egypt. It does have its inspirations uh, from Egypt. Oh, you can see the, I think that's supposed to be a Medusa head in there, but you know, uh, but you know, as we all know, tarot, as we know, it came from uh, Europe and all that. Playing cards, on the other hand, that's another story. <laughs> uh, so yeah, here we have the Page of Swords. Let me see the knight again. Yeah, interesting. So here we have the ten, multiple cross swords, the nine. I do love the different designs and the ordering of them. You know, they're not just the plain old, you know, simple ones. I think unless I may do a compare, I may have to take a look at the neoclassical. No, the neoclassical doesn't look anything like this. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't have the cross swords like this. Uh, what's interesting is that this is like Terror of the Egyptians, but I mean, you know, when I think of Egyptian swords, uh, I think of those sickle scythe type of swords, not these straight swords here. They have like a curve to them, which I think are very neat and interesting. And yeah, here we have the king of coins, the queen. Oh, interesting. Wait, oh no. I was like, wait, does the king have the, have the, have a, I, I, I saw it and I thought, oh, she has the, she has, you know, uh, but here you can see them looking at each other and here you, she, they're looking at the same, kind of at the same thing almost, if you want to read into that, if you want to use this deck for divination. Like I said, I don't think I will. Uh, I'll try not to. My hands, they, they, they like to shuffle. <laughs> uh, so here's a page. Here's a page of coins, which is on, if you go to the Amazon or uh, any website that's showing, sharing some of the images of the cards, this card is one of the example cards. Uh, so yeah, let me see what is this. Yeah, yeah. And then the coins with the different symbols on them, the leer, the cup. Uh, is that a pyramid? Or is that a cap? Uh, the T, is that Hebrew? No. Sanskrit? No, no, not gonna... <laughs> Yeah, uh, what is the added coin here? Wait, do I have two? Oh no! Don't tell me! No! Oh no! Oh please tell me I just have. T please tell me that I only have two of the same, and I'm not missing a card. So I have two sixty-eights, sixty-nine, seventy, Seventy-one, seventy-two, seventy-three, seventy-four. Now I'm like flipping through because I want to make sure. Seventy-five, seventy-six, seventy-seven, seventy-eight. Okay. Let me double check. Let me go through, make sure. Because when there's a double like that, I probably missed a card. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20. And, and you guys probably like watching this, watching this, watching me do the initial flip through. We're like, wait, what? There's a card missing. You missed the card, Zach. And I'm like, wait, what? And I'm probably just like, oh, this is such a nice little deck. Uh, and here I am. Hopefully, I just have an extra card uh, and not a missing one. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, And I must count there. Yeah, 71, 72, 73, 5, 76, 77, 78. Yeah. Anyways, let's look at this full card. <laughs> so wait, okay, 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 okay. Let me look at something here. Hold on a minute, okay? So this is like, wait, what is this? The Ace of Coins? Oh yeah, that is the Ace of Coins. That's an interesting Ace of Coins. That is very, that, okay. Because this is the Wheel of Fortune. Or, well, a depiction of the Wheel of Fortune and other decks. Uh, or, no, no, no. Um, this is Fortune in the Sibylla deck. That's where I saw it. Because I always see her, the, the cornucopia is, like, turned over and there's, like, a bunch of coins falling out. Uh, but she's not holding a coin. She's holding something else, I think, in her other hand. Uh, but she is dancing on the wheel like that. Uh, and she is, like, dressed very similarly to that. But anyways, here we have the Fool, though, separate at the very bottom, 78th, you know, rather than with the Major Arcana. Uh, you see the feline cat here. Uh, what else? Is that a shell? A bell? What is that on it? Yeah. So far, it looks like I have all 78. Turns out I got an extra card. What is this? The Ten of Coins? Yeah, the Ten of Coins. Okay, I really want to shuffle this deck. <laughs> oh, no. I, I don't want to shuffle it because it's like it's not made for shuffling. But it's like I'm feeling it and it's like I'm feeling it. <laughs> No, this deck is not made for shuffling, though. Okay, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to be real careful. Do not do this. Do not do this. I'm, like, being, like, super gentle with it. It actually feels nice. <laughs> this is actually... Okay, I kind of like it. Okay, if I am going to use it, I'm going to have to get an extra copy. <laughs> and be super careful with it. No, like I said, I'm going to probably... Uh, Maybe scan these images and then send them to makeplayingcards.com to print out my a copy for myself so I can use a copy to uh, to to read with. <gasps> Maybe with linen cardstock. <gasps> yeah, I'm gonna do that, <laughs> but I, I'm not gonna reproduce it or anything like that. No, it's just for my personal use. So don't reproduce your decks. But that is so weird. That is a first. That is a first. Mark this day, people. I got a double of a card, and I'm not missing a card, I think. I'm going to count my cards again. <laughs> uh, and see what I... Let's see, make sure I'm not missing any. So that's what I'm going to spend the rest of my day doing, counting those cards. Uh, because this really is paranoid. Or there is someone else that has the Terror of the Egyptians. Uh, if you are missing a Ten of Coins, here it is. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> maybe edition 440... Maybe one of the previous editions, so like either 440... Uh, 7 or 449. I don't know. Or I'll keep it as a bookmark. Or I don't know. But if you are missing a card, let me just say right now, n never don't fret because even though this is a limited edition deck, uh, if you are in America, message Llewellyn and they will send you a replacement card uh, for free. Uh, if you are in Europe, uh, um, you you uh, email uh, Los Carabeo uh, and they will send you a replacement card as well. Uh, so... There you go. Uh, I, 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 when my uh, Metelli and my Solobuska had a damaged card in them, uh, I messaged Los Carabeo and they took forever to get to me because I'm in America. Uh, but then I messaged Llewellyn and they came in like a week or two. So there we go. There you have it. This is the Terror of the Egyptians, uh, a very nice little fortune tellery type of Atea deck. Uh, very interesting. You can definitely use this. is definitely going to be an important deck if you are into tarot studies and. Uh, research into historical occult tarot. 
Um, now I'm off to buy the other Atea decks because I don't have those. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed uh, and snag your copy soon because you know these will go out of pr these will be these are limited edition. These are limited edition decks. And I'm just shuffling them. <laughs> no, I'm going to try not to shuffle them. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all. Actually, I'm going to film uh, the Tarot Scopes after this. So yeah, bye everyone.